put the who's in on the whatsy. Attach the whatsy to the who'sy. Connect the thingamajig to the thingamabob. And that'll make the whatchamacallit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Making Records. I'm still Eric Valentine. Uh, so this week, uh, I wanted to get back into something a little nerdy. This will be quick and nerdy, but um, uh, hopefully no no less um, you know helpful or important than any of the other stuff. I realized at a certain point, going through all this stuff and talking about um, how things are mixed and EQ'd and compressed and mic choices and all of these things uh, are really based on um, how you're hearing things, and uh, and so. I realized that monitoring is really important. Um, it's a huge, huge part of how people make these decisions uh, when you're choosing how to do stuff uh, in a mix or whatever. So um, I, I went through quite a journey uh, in my, my years making, making records, um, figuring out monitoring that worked for me. Um, and it started in Northern California, actually. I mean, it, it started in, in the 80s. Um, you know, I started off with NS10s. At a certain point, I got these Erie A13Cs, and I was still really just figuring out what speakers should or shouldn't sound like. I was just, you know, um, didn't have much experience under my belt. All I knew is that a lot of people used NS10s, and the Erie A13Cs were, were loud, and so I could turn them up loud. And uh, ultimately, I ended up at uh, a warehouse in Redwood City, which was the location of the lovely and endearing hunk of shit studios. And built a control room in the corner of this warehouse, uh, very quick, quick and cheap. And um, I ended up building speaker soffits for the Yuri A13Cs, uh, just out of leftover construction materials from building the, the room itself. And uh, so I built a, a frame and a little pedestal, you know, a wood pedestal for the speakers to sit on, and then just filled in the void of these soffit enclosures with old, you know, cut up carpet and stuff like that to deaden the inside of the enclosures. And, um, you know, when it, when it was all done and I turned up the speakers, they sounded incredible. Uh, in fact, they sounded kind of unbelievably incredible. Um, I, I loved the way they sounded whenever anybody else came there and heard them, I, I literally got reactions from people like, I've never heard 813s sound like this. These sound unbelievable. And uh, so I very naively thought, this is great, super easy. It was the first time I had built speaker soffits. And, um, you know, I just build a soffit, throw my Yuri 813C in there, and it'll sound incredible, and everything's great. Uh, so then, you know, cut to, 2000, uh, I moved to um, the Vine Street location, which is uh, used to be Crystal Studios. It's now uh, Barefoot Recording. And I brought my same old Your 813Cs and um, wanted to really do it right this time. Did all kinds of super duper acoustic treatment and, you know, um, did everything, you know, according to the books and all of that stuff uh, with really nice materials, all the stuff you're supposed to use instead of leftover carpet and whatever. And, uh, you know, did this huge big build that looked amazing and got to the end of it and turned up the speakers and guess what happened? The speakers sounded awful. <laughs> they sounded so dreadful. And, uh, and so, you know, the, it was uh, my, my naive you know, life thinking that uh, speaker speaker soffits were easy was over. It, it came crashing down at Barefoot. And it was a real problem. It was a big crisis. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I had to keep working. And um, so I had to just use lots of different references. I would have to take mixes out to my car and these like boom boxes and stereos and all these other places and cross check all over the place because it was so confusing monitoring in that room. And so then that was the beginning of a long journey, um, trying to fix that room. And, uh, and so I did all kinds of stuff. Um, I brought in acousticians to check out the room. Some people told me I had to put a hard surface um, 
in front of the console below where the speakers were. That didn't make any difference or maybe even made it worse. Another person came in and listened to Dark Side of the Moon on the speakers and said, you have to brace the back wall and then everything will be great. That did nothing. Um, it was all just a giant waste of time. And so I got sort of frustrated with, you know, relying on other people to figure it out. And so I, I had to just take that journey on my own and try and figure out a solution for it. And so that initiated multiple rounds of me um, redoing <laughs> that control room <laughs> to everybody's dismay and them all thinking I'd completely lost my mind. Uh, I can't even remember all the different iterations of it. It went on and on and on. At one point, I decided, ah, oh, maybe I should be more at the back of the room. Then I'd, I'd hear more low end. There seems to be more low end in the back of the room. So I <laughs> totally rewired the whole room, moved all my racks, moved this insanely massive 88R console back towards the back of the room so I'd get the benefit of all this buildup of low frequency in the back of the room. There was definitely more low end, but it was as un, you know, unpredictable and um, unreliable as ever. There was tons of anomalies in the frequency response and didn't, didn't do me any good at all. There was just more of it, um, but it was equally inaccurate. And uh, so that didn't, wasn't really the solution. Then ultimately I sold the, uh, the 88R console. It was a little easier for me to experiment in the room. Um, so I just had like a, a little workstation and I could face whatever direction I want. So I tried everything in that room. I tried facing different directions, all different locations. And in that search, I was like, I'm, I'm just determined to figure this out. I want to be able to listen to music in my control room and actually know if it's right or not and not go to my car and have this giant surprise of like, okay, look at that, the low end's totally wrong. Um, it actually, you know, created a lot of anxiety for me. Um, so uh, I finally discovered a couple of tools in that journey that made a huge difference for me. 